Mr. Leeton Flowers, Mr. N.T. Wright. If you can only understand the implications of the consequences at the end of your life, when you close your eyes on this side and pass on to eternal life, I say to you, and all others who stand alongside you, you might miss heaven, but you won't miss hell. Continue on bringing confusion. Continue on swaying people, tap dancing around texts of scripture, especially Romans chapter 9 in the New Testament. The great brothers, the contemporary still today, John Piper, Dr. John MacArthur, all are learnt elders in the church who are so studied, prayed up, fasted up, filled with the Holy Spirit, rightly dividing the word of truth, and you bash them, and you come up against them. You're not coming up against them. You're coming up against Holy Writ, Holy Scriptures, the Word of God, the Bible. Repent and believe. Go back to the writings of Charles Haddon Spurgeon, John Flavel, the Puritans, our precious Puritan brothers. Read their paperbacks. Read their writings. John Calvin. Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones. Listen to what Brother Jones has to say as he disapproves of N.T. Wright's deceit about the wrath of God. So many people are actually put off the gospel, some of them having tried to believe it for many mm. years, and then finally they just say, no, that sounds like a bullying God. If there is a God, he can't really be like that. And sadly, there are many churches in which this vision of an angry God who's going to get you, who demands mm. blood, and da 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 Let me clear away one preliminary misunderstanding. There are some people who completely misinterpret the very term wrath. They think of wrath instinctively as some uncontrolled manifestation of anger. They cannot think of the term wrath except in somebody who is trembling in a rage and pale with passion and who's entirely lost self-control and is just speaking in a violent manner and doing violent things. Well, that's quite a, a false idea with regard to wrath. Sinful men, it is true, sometimes does manifest his wrath in that way. But all that is not by any means an essential part of this term wrath. Wrath is nothing but a manifestation of indignation based upon justice. Indeed, I'll go further, and I'll say this. That wrath, the wrath of God, according to the scriptural teaching, is nothing but the other side of the love of God. Indeed, it is the inevitable corollary of the rejection of the love of God. God is a God of love, yes, but God is also a God of justice and of righteousness. And if God's love is spurned and rejected, there remains nothing but the wrath and the justice and the righteousness of God. But this is something which is taught everywhere in the scripture. Indeed, I would go so far as to say this, that unless we start with this idea of the wrath of God against sin, we cannot possibly understand the compassion of God. We cannot understand the love of God. It's only as I realize God's wrath against sin that I realize what he has done in himself providing a way of salvation from it. And if I don't understand this, I don't understand that. And my talk about the love of God is mere sentiment. 
It's mere loose sentimental vanity, which is indeed a denial of this great biblical doctrine of the love of God. Well, now, then, the apostle's teaching is that until we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we are under the wrath of God. And the wrath of God is an expression of God's hatred of sin. It is an expression of God's punishment of sin. And it is a clear statement of this effect. That if we die in our sins, we go on to eternal punishment. Unrelieved. That's the teaching of the scripture. The wrath of God against sin manifests itself in hell where men and women remain outside the life of God in misery and wretchedness, slaves to their own lusts and desires, selfish and self-centered, the wrath of God manifests itself in that way. And the apostle's teaching is that that is the position of all who are not Christians. They are under the wrath of God in this life. They will remain under the wrath of God in the next life. That is the position of the sinner according to the scriptures. If you object to the idea, you are objecting to the scriptures. You are setting up some philosophical idea of your own instead of the plain teaching of the scripture. You are not arguing with me, you are arguing with the scriptures. You are arguing with these holy apostles. You are arguing with the Son of God himself. If you believe this word is divinely inspired, well then you must not say, but I don't understand. I'm not asking you to understand. I don't understand it. I don't pretend to understand it. But I start from this basis, that my mind is not only finite, but is furthermore sinful. And that I cannot possibly understand the nature of God and the justice and the holiness of God. If you are going to base everything on your understanding, well then, my friend, you might as well give up at this point. For the Bible tells you that the natural man and the natural mind cannot understand the things of the Spirit of God. It was the desire that to understand that led to the fall. Intellectual pride and arrogance is the last sin. And I stand here not to ask you to understand. It is my commission to proclaim the message. And the message is that all are under the wrath of God until they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Those of you who are listening to this video by God's divine providence. And brothers and sisters in Christ, we are called to be as wise as serpents and harmless as doves. In practical application, before I end this video, P.S., I add a footnote. There are a lot of people, both men, women, and children, on YouTube channels in 2023, in a time where everything is becoming ripe for judgment. We're li living in the days of doctrines of demons, as the Apostle Paul told his young protege, Timothy. Folks, there's a lot of money in religion. A lot of money in religion. And there's false teachers, false prophets at every corner, at every turn. For you to build up a YouTube channel in religion and not give a hoop about religion, Christianity, Calvinism, or Arminianism, any one of those isms. But there's some people who are looking just to get a lot of subs and views and build up a YouTube channel 
that will grow itself to make thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, a hundred thousand dollars a month. With all these debates and controversies, be not ignorant of Satan's devices. Be no longer ignorant, the Apostle Paul said to the Church of Corinth. Be no longer ignorant of Satan's devices. He brings deception. He brings discord. His objective is to steal, kill, and destroy the true gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Search the scriptures. Stop listening to these men. Calvinism is so much lined up with the Holy Scriptures if you would only search and see for yourself. Learning to rightly divide the word of truth. Stop listening to these men. They're in the business of winning souls to hell. Their father's the devil and the desires of their father they will do. Can they be saved? Well, absolutely. That's the beauty of it. We speak this firmly but in love. Because if you take the life of that tent maker, yes, Apostle Paul was a tent maker. And when he was riding on that horse on the road at Damascus, when he was leading families, men, women, and children, whoever believed in Christianity, because he was a Jew, Judaism is the grandfather of Christianity, God slit, took him off that horse, slammed him into the dirt, took away his eyesight for three days. And when his physical eyes went away, his spiritual eyes were born. And he met the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And now the Lord said, guess what, Paul? Now you are going to give your whole life. You are going to serve me in the gospel. How's that sound? How did it sound to the Apostle Paul? It was music into his ears. Because he was filled with the Holy Spirit. He had a heartfelt religion. No longer a dead religion. And he, my friends, by the breath inspiration of God himself, wrote Romans chapter 9. All scripture is given by inspiration. Theopronustos. All scripture is God breathed. God breathed with the mouths and pens of men to write the scriptures. It's inherent. It's without error. God wrote a book. I encourage you to read it. And as you read it, pray the Holy Spirit would reveal to you that what we say is true. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was the ultimate sacrifice to die on the cross for sinners. He didn't die for everyone head for head. Jesus Christ did not come to die for every man, woman, and child that would come into this creature time. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, came to seek and save those who are lost. He came to save us, his people. We are the chosen ones. We are God's people from eternity past. We have come here into a lost, fallen world. We are not of this world. We're just a passing through. We're pilgrims. Or aliens in a far country. 
And our Lord is coming back from us. He's coming back for us. And we cry, come Lord Jesus, come. Please get us out of here as soon as you can. And he's going to come in his perfect timing. And until then, we will fight for the truth. We will pull out our sword. We will earnestly contend for the faith once delivered to the saints. Because we know that the victory has already been won. Victoria in Cristo on our Rey de la Gloria. Sola de Gloria. Thank you for listening. Please subscribe, like. We're not building this channel to fatten our pockets. We're building this channel to build treasures in heaven. Shalom.